What's going on Salt Strong Nation? Today I want to help add some clarification to the debate between paddle tails and jerk shads. These are two lures that perform amazingly for inshore fishing when you're targeting redfish, speckled trout, flounder, and even snook. Both of these lures can get you onto all of these species of fish and there's a big debate as to which one is better than the other. Now I do believe that is the wrong question to be asking and in this video you're not going to get an answer as to paddle tails are better than jerk shads or vice versa. This is going to be more about when to use each of these two lures. Each of them has a very specific purpose and one will usually outperform the other in specific scenarios. So I want to go ahead and dive into some of these differences between paddle tails and jerk shads and when you should be using each one. Now I want to start with paddle tails because I do believe that they should probably be the first lure that you start to throw as they are a search bait. And again, when we get out on the water, we don't know exactly where fish are. Sometimes we do know the general area of where these fish are going to be, but I still would recommend that you start with throwing a paddle tail because if you kind of imagine fishing as searching through a jungle for some hidden treasure and those fish being the hidden treasure, this is your machete to clear out most of that brush. You're covering a lot of ground with long casts and you're able to make really constant retrieves with a couple pauses mixed in to get that reaction strike out of fish that may be following it. Uh, but most times what we're doing is covering ground with the paddle tail. It's not really your scalpel like the jerk shad is, and I'll dive into that in a minute. But what the paddle tail allows you to do is just cover a lot of ground really quickly. You know, you're searching over potholes, you may be searching through marsh creeks, and you don't want to spend a whole lot of time on really long retrieves. And one of the great pros of the paddle tail is that you can retrieve it pretty quickly and still get a lot of strikes from that. And again, just adding a couple quick pauses or maybe some twitches in, you know, halfway through, or maybe two or three pauses throughout that retrieve, just allowing a little bit of a stoppage to any fish that may be following it at the time. I like to make just a full cast and add, you know, two to three stops in uh, about the full length of that retrieve if I got a full cast in. And that just allows any trout that may be following it or red drum just to get it right on that drop. And that's where I find a lot of fish will hit paddle tails right on the drop. But what we're doing is covering ground to number one, get the attention of fish in areas that we don't know where they are and just be able to move through areas quickly. It's not about staying in one spot and continuously fishing this paddle tail. It's very rare that I make two casts to the same spot with a paddle tail. A lot of times I will be fishing a small cove or a marsh creek and I'll make casts at different angles and once I've covered every angle, I'm moving on to the next creek. This is my search bait to really find those fish so that I can cover areas quickly and find out exactly where they are. And another advantage that paddle tails have over jerk shads is they can be worked in areas with high current and high winds. These paddle tails have really good vibration and kick to them and that does create a good presence in water that's already being disturbed by really heavy current or has been disturbed by you know some really heavy winds that are kind of churning up things on the flats again in dirty water these are also a really good lure but that's not to say that the jerk shads can't work in dirty water as well and those paddle tails are great again to cover that ground but one thing that they really do lack is the ability to invoke those really good reaction strikes from spooky fish or lethargic fish that you just can't get to bite a lot of times you can roll a paddle tail in front of a fish fish's nose that's really lazy, has been really affected by heat or cold or just spooky overall. And a lot of times it won't hit it if they are looking for that reaction strike. Maybe they might not be feeding at that time and you really want to invoke something that's deep and genetic with a reaction strike from an erratic motion. I use a ton of different types of lures, the Little Johns, our Alabama Leprechauns that we make here at Salt Strong, and they all perform really well. But what they do is they invoke that strike with erratic twitches. Now the con to these retrieves is that they do take a long time to perform and perform correctly. I can usually get three or four casts in with a paddle tail, cover that ground as I can with one retrieve from a jerk shad. A lot of times I don't take these out until I know where the fish are. If I'm working potholes over with paddle tails and I do find that the fish are kind of locked down in a specific patch of potholes, I'm going to start throwing that jerk shad into those potholes and working it there. If I find that there are some redfish that are backed up into a marsh creek, a lot of times I'm going to use that jerk shad to get that strike from them. But I'm not going to be feeling out which creek actually has those fish in them with the jerk shad because it takes a long time to perform that retrieve and perform it correctly. So you're going to be spending a lot of time in one area that may or may not have fish with these jerk shads if you've not done the searching with the paddle tails. So it's very important that you use the correct lure when you're searching for fish and then the correct lure when you've actually found them and you want to get the most amount of strikes. Again, the two lures that I really like to use as far as paddle tails go are going to be the Slam Shady just because 
because it's one of those colors that works in really wide variety of scenarios, clean water, dirty water, and it's just got a really good kick in the tail with both the 1.0 that we make with Z-Man and the 2.0 that we make here at Salt Strong as well. Again, I really like the drop on the 2.0. It's got a little bit more of a tail wag, and that's really great for those trout, and I found that it works well for the redfish too. But as far as jerk shads, I'm gonna use a wide variety of different brands. I like the Mirror Lure Little Johns. We've been testing these with Wader Dave and had some really good success with them in a wade fishing trip this past week. I also like to use our Alabama Leprechauns, which are fantastic out on these flats here in Texas. Again, over those potholes, on those open grass flats where I can see the fish. They may be a little spooky because I may have run them over and I can usually get a very good reaction strike out of those fish if I'm go ahead and giving those twitches. And again, there's a nice little bit of scent that's built into those Leprechauns and I can usually get some really good strikes out of those fish. So I hope this video helped you guys differentiate which lure you need to be using in each specific scenario. And again, as we talk about, we're not sponsored by any companies or anything like that. And we really are just here to help you guys figure out what you need to be using to catch the most fish. And if you want to learn how to find the fish and make the most out of your fishing trips, I highly recommend you join us in the Salt Strong Insider Club. So if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America because we literally guarantee that you'll be catching more fish in less time while saving money on your tackle. We do this by providing you with premium education, an exclusive online fishing community, and access to group discounts on the best saltwater fishing tackle. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. We hope to see you in the Insider Club family soon.